Hey guys, TJ here from Harper Coliseum, and today we're bringing you a, a very special profile, one that we've had requested a few times. And joining me on this ride to, to help bring the profile, we have uh, Sunny, our local gallant monstan, our, 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 our gallant knight in shining armor, if you want to say hi. Hey guys. And yeah, so Sunny's the one who, aside from Jarrell, is probably the one you're seeing on our channel most playing this, whenever you do see it on the channel. And he's been doing well with it. Uh, he won locals just a couple weeks back. You've consistent, or I'd say fairly consistently, like doing doing pretty decently with it in general, from what I've seen. And uh, yeah, so before we get into that, though, it, just a quick reminder: if you are watching this video and you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Please hit the subscribe button, and if you, if you if you if you be so kind, maybe hit the like one too. And if you want to go the extra mile and just get those extra hairs on your chest, become a member. Get a little crazy with it. We got special perks rolling out for you guys coming up soon. And on top of all of that, we're already doing these sort of member exclusive deck profiles where you guys get to pick the deck. We do it for members early where they get to sort of see the video early and then it goes public a few days later. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to do it for all these sort of little early logistics and whatnot. Uh, go on ahead and jump into the profile here. Sonny, I'm going to toss it to you if you want to just go card by card. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, starting off. For the babies, we're going to use EX2 Gigimon. So this deck is super tamer reliant. You definitely need to see your pieces. So I run this egg just for the extra draw. I've seen other people use the plus 1000 DP on deletion egg, and that's really good. I think it depends on like what your local's environment or if you expect to see a lot of Mirage, because sometimes you can just instant lose with this egg, but you can play around it by hard slamming things. Uh, overall, pretty good egg. Um, pretty standard. Um, moving on to rookies. Uh, we're gonna run four EX2 Gilmons. Um, it's search top four at a Growlmon or Gallantmon, and one Takato. And then for inheritables, it's uh, when attacking, pop a 3k or less. Um, it's probably it's our best searcher. Um, that's why we run four. Um, helps with consistency. I find like a lot of times like on turn one, like I don't mind like just hard dropping it uh, right away to look for more pieces or Takatos if I didn't open up with it. Um, for our next rookie, I'm running three of the new Gilmon in BT17. Uh, this Gilmon uh, reads, on your turn, when one of your Kalamon or Tamers with Takato and its name is played, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3k or less, and if this effect didn't delete, gain one memory. And then for the Inheritable, um, it's all turns when you're at zero or less memory, add 2k to this Digimon's uh, DP based deletion effects maximums. Um, this card, super good. Um, I, I really like it um, because, one, it allows you to potentially play Takatos for one cheaper. I, I've found, like, uh, a, a normal turn one opener I feel like I find doing is having this Gilmon and raising, and then hard playing an EX2 Gilmon to search. And then next turn, I'll promote my Gilmon, and then I'll just hard play a Takato, and sometimes that'll like pop an Ukomon they hard played, or and you can get value that way, or you can get an extra memory back for just playing the Takato itself. Um, otherwise, the plus two thousand DP sometimes does come up. Mm -hmm. um, Good Digimon. Um, the next rookie we got is three of the EX4 Gilmon. Mm -hmm. This Gilmon gains Rush on play when uh, there's 20 or more total cards in trash between two players. Um, I find a lot of the times in this deck, I, so I've seen a lot of lists play about two of them, but I've wanted to see this so often to help with warp plays. And you can play it off of um, EX3 War Gralamon, the one that mills three. Mm -hmm. So you can get extra swings that way. 
um super important to the strategy i think to be able to like play this and warp up and be able to swing with a gallant mon so three seems like the right number um i wouldn't bump it down any more than that gotcha yeah i was gonna say i feel like i've seen you do that a couple of times too or actually more than a couple a, a lot of times where you're, like later on in the game you'll get to a point where you've done a decent bit of chip and you'll get to a point where like you just need that one last swing and you just are able to just hard slam this geel and then do uh, a warp play with the, the bt17 takato it's, it's always really cool to see yeah super integral to the game plan and like closing out the games it's even better now with the the warp takato yeah um but it had its role before too um to round off the rookies we have um two bt12 guillemons uh this is on play reveal top four add all takatos revealed um i put two here because sometimes like you just aren't seeing your takatos and just hard playing this Gilmon can help you out a bunch. Dig four for Takato as opposed to like finding it off of a training or something. Look at top two. You're more likely to find something off there. And I find since you play a decent amount of Takatos in this list, that sometimes you can get two Takatos off the rip, which is super good. Mm -hmm. um, for the inheritable, it's a uh, just a simple plus two thousand DP, but. 2000 dp is always relevant i feel like shifting from the into the, like the bt16 meta like dp is always important like to swing over your magnemons your tyrants like there's just a lot of chunky digimon like yeah. in the in the current meta so for the rookies we're going to move on to champions. To start off here, I got four EX3 Growlmons. Um, this Growlmon reads, when digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3k DP or less. If nothing was deleted by this effect, trash top two um, of both players' decks. I didn't originally play this card at all, but I ended up liking it a lot. Um, for the one digivolving effect, one, just being able to plop small guys like Floodgates or just like, you'll see Ukos everywhere. So just being able to get rid of that Uko value is super good. Um, but it can also help accelerate your game plan with milling both sides. So you can get graveyard count up for your crimson modes or to be able to play BT-13 Gallantmon out for cheaper. But also, the the biggest thing about this card, I feel like, is the Inheritable. Um, it's uh, It reads, when attacking, once per turn you may delete one of your other Digimon to have this Digimon gain sec plus one. And there is a super good combo that I feel in this deck whenever I use this card. So... I'll evolve into, say I have like a setup board with an EX2 Takato, which that's the Takato that gives Blitz when digivolving to the Growlmon line. Right. Um, I'll Evo into the that EX3 War Growl, Mill 3. I'll play some sort of, I'll play like the Rush Gilmon or something. And then I'll Blitz with that War Growlmon and then it, usually I'm passing the turns and I'm blitzing. So end of turn, you if you're set up, you can warp up into a Gallant Mon using this Growl Mon in the trash. So when you swing with the new Gallant Mon, you can pop your original stack to get an extra security plus. And sometimes that's just like enough to push, like put more pressure on your opponent. So I really like that extra sec plus um, there definitely helped me close out a lot of games so uh that's why that's at four uh digging it a lot um move into our next champion i got three bt12 Growlmons. uh it's the Growlmon that plays a takato if you don't have one and then the inheritable is plus 2000 dp um super great uh just being able to get your takatos out asap is really nice and 2000 dp for reasons i said before 
the meta being really large in DP, like, the card's just good. Yeah. Can't wait for the future realm on that lets you play another Takato, even if you already have one tamer out. Yeah, the, straight, so. the straight up just power creep <laughs> that we're getting for all the level fours that is just like, yeah, you know, how about we let you play two Tama now, not just one? Yeah, literally. But I, I, I think I would miss the 2k DP inheritable because mm -hmm. sometimes Gallimon just doesn't get, isn't big enough. Yeah, it doesn't climb. Um, and then finishing off champions, we got three EX4 black Gralmons. Um, this Gralmon is trash top two of both players' decks, and then you can return a Gilmon or a Gralmon or a Gallantmon from a trash to your hand. Super important to be able to recycle your pieces, because I feel like when you're milling all these cards for more Gralmon or, Gil or Gralmon or Black Gralmon, you sometimes will mill like a Gallantmon you need, or you needed a rookie, so super good i've thought about running this at four but because the warp specifically names growlmon i tried to prioritize having more growlmons than black growlmons um makes sense so that's kind of the deal with that um beyond deletion is um you may do the same thing like you can just return a piece uh from your trash be it Gilmon, growlmon or gallantmon um, same reasons before. Just great to recycle your pieces back. Hmm. Moving on to level fives or ultimates. I have four War Growlmon. Uh, when did you evolving? Uh, trash top three of both the d both player and opponent decks. Then if there's five or more in trash, you can play Geomon or Takato. Uh, from your trash, hand or trash, without paying the memory costs. I think without a doubt that this is the best for Gralmon, and it's just so hard to print a, a better one than this. <laughs> yeah, uh, th this is the EX2 one, right? Uh, EX3, EX3. Or EX3, sorry. Rather. Yeah, 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 sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, it's any, I mean, it's that kind of like, uh, the whole thing where just the ability to just get extra like board advantage with like an extra body on there or just the tamer it's so it's so insane it's so good yeah it, it either like sets you up for like future plays it's also a combo extender when you combo it with um bt17 takato the warp takato mm -hmm. um i just find like i always want to be evolving into this but there are other there are other uh, level fives. So, but I will say it's more ground on in name, and it does everything you want it to do. Mills for the game plan, so you can trash more security with Crimson Mode, play Gallimon for cheaper, plays Gilmon. Sometimes I'll like I'll play EX2 Gilmon to try to search deeper if I'm just not finding my right pieces, mm. or, or just playing another Warp Takato to like further set my board up because sometimes like i can evolve into war Gralmon without p passing the turn and i don't have a warp takato out or i had already used it in like a previous play a few turns back i'll replay that warp takato i'll blitz that security like it'll still be my turn then i can just play a Gilmon to pass the turn and then i can warp up and like finish my combo um yeah that's all I really got to say about EX3 War Gralmon. Nice, nice. Um, moving on. I got two BT12 War Gralmon. Um, this one is uh, when did you evolving? Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 4k DP or less. If no opponent's Digimon was de deleted by this effect, you may digivolve this Digimon into a level 6 with Gallantmon in its name. Uh, in your hand for the digivolution cost, uh, when it would digivolve by this effect, reduce the digivolution cost by one. And then for the inheritable, it's end of attack. Um, if your opponent has no Digimon in play, this Digimon and this Digimon has Growlmon or Gallantmon in the name, gain two memory. So, this, uh, Growlmon, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm saying this about a lot of the pieces, but 
It's really good. <laughs> Galmon's gotten so much support. Yeah. But yeah, when evolving into this, being able to reduce the Digivolution cost by one if they have nothing on the board, or just clearing like a small body, like it's everything you want, like in a when did you evolving effect. And so, say for example, I evolve into War Growlmon. I pass the it passes the turn. I'm at one. It still lets me evolve into a Gallantmon. Gallantmon with EX2 Takato, which the whole game plan kind of revolves around, lets me blitz with that new Gallantmon, uh, which I did evolve for a reduced cost of one. So usually it's like I'm paying two or three for that effect and then at the end of attack if it lives like i'll gain two memory back sometimes that even like will set me back on my turn mm -hmm. which is really nice yeah um and then also warping up with war Growlmon is also really nice when you're extending your play and then they have nothing on board already and you warp up to pass the turn and then you take your turn back with the newly warped Gallantmon with this War Growl in there. <laughs> Great A. Um, moving on to finish off the level fives, we got War Growlmon. War Growlmon, the, uh, the BT17 one, sorry. Um, when Digivolving, uh, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 6k DP or less. Um, if this effect didn't delete, this Digimon gains sec plus one for the turn. And then the inheritable is all turns when an effect deletes an opponent's Digimon, you may unsuspend this Digimon with Gallantmon in its name. <clears throat> so this is New War Gallmon, super good. I'll keep saying that about all the support because I feel like most of the support has been really good. Um, but back to the idea of being aggro and being able to put pressure on your opponent. Um, if you draw ideally um, and you're going up the line, you'll be able to go into this War Growlmon with a EX2 Takato on the on the field. Uh, say you didn't delete anything or you delete their level 4 or something. You're swinging in, you'll be able to get 1 to 2 checks, but uh, mainly the sec plus 1 has been super relevant lately to help me finish out the games. Just to help me like close games quicker. Yeah. And then on um, the inheritable, when an effect deletes an opponent's Digimon, you may unsuspend this Digimon with Gallantmon in its name. So say it lives through the two checks. Like you're swinging, for example, like maybe like 9k for two checks. It lives both the checks. Um, say they have like a kind of a bigger Digimon out. Mm -hmm. Um and you Evo into a Gallantmon, and that Gallantmon pops that um, their Digimon by effect. It's able to restand itself, and then you can activate when Digivolving Blitz again, so you can get more value out from it. <laughs> yeah. Not that I've had too many instances like that, because that is like a very memory-heavy play, but mm -hmm. it's also there for if you're already in Gallantmon, like, you have this in your Inheritables and you swing with your Gallantmon. When you are able to go into Crimson Mode Ace and you pop there, you'll be able to restand your Digimon and sometimes you'll have Blocker on your stack. So you'll be able to block while also popping, like, most of their board. Yeah. Um, and that's it for the level fives. Um... Moving on to the Gallantmons, um, we got two BT12 Gallantmons. This one's the Raid Gallantmon. Sometimes their guys are standing. Raid lets you swing into unsuspended Digimon, which is great. And also, when attacking, if it doesn't pop a 6k DP or less, you can trash the top of your opponent's security stack. Um, sometimes, when you're swinging and doing your early aggro, get them down to one security. If you can just warp up to this Gallantmon while they have one security, you're going for game right there. Mm. If they don't have any, like, aces or something along those lines. So it's good for finishing out games. Also good for going against those pesky standard Digimon that you can't get with other deletion effects. Yeah. 
Um, so in this one, next Gallantmon, we've got BT13 Gallantmon. This guy is an absolute monster. So <laughs> I love this Gallantmon so much. And honestly, I would cut a BT12 Gallantmon to play a third one of these. But I kind of like that even split of Gallantmons that I have right now. Um, so this Gallantmon has Rush. It's on play when digivolving, when attacking. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with six care less. And if no opponent's Digimon was deleted by this effect, delete one of your one of their opponent's Digimon with 13k D DP or more. Um, and also, when you would play this card from your hand, if you have no Digimon on your board, reduce the play cost by two for every five total cards. For every five total cards in both players' trashes. So at 35 cards, you're playing Gallantmon for free. At 30 cards, you're play paying it for like one, I believe. So you have nothing on board. It's a, it's a really good clapback card. And it helps you get rid of those like larger Digimon that are like above 13K and clear out like small wide boards. Because sometimes you'll like you'll warp up with the EX2 Gralmon, you're swinging. When did you evolving? You'll pop a six care or a six care less. You swing. You can pop a three care less with Gralmon, and then you can pop their biggest guy with uh, 13 k or more. Yeah, it's just great for clearing boards. Mm -hmm. But also, it is one of the best warp targets because you can warp up to this without having rush at all because there's rush on the card already. Right. So when you warp onto this with EX2 to, um, to cut out, it can automatically blitz at security or Digimon right away. So it's like the most flexible warp target. And so cards are really good. Wouldn't bump it down to two or anything less than two. Debatably, I would play more. <laughs> <laughs> um... Moving on to our last level six, our last Gallantmon. It's the new BT-17 Gallantmon. When I originally had read this card in the spoilers, I thought this card was so mid and like not great, but actually playing it in theory is crazy. Um, it won. Uh, so it's when did you evolving when attacking, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with AK DP or less. If this effect didn't delete, this Digimon gets 3k and gains blocker until the end of your opponent's turn. And then on your turn, while you have zero or less memory, this Digimon is, isn't affected by your opponent's Digimon effects. So first of all, if you're at zero memory or you're blitzing at it, security or whatever, um, and you're at one or, or you, your opponent's at like one or two memory and you're finishing your turn like that, you're not affected by aces, you're not affected by their security Digimon, or uh, not security Digimon, their security like options and security. Yeah. You're just like unaffected, which is mm -hmm. crazy. Like you don't have to worry about getting aced. Or if you're going against something like uh, Dex right now, like you're not going to get D Digivolved if you swing into it. But also, um, sorry, tracking back a little bit, okay. but um, when Digivolving, uh, when you, you can pop an 8k, but this is also not once per turn. Right. So you can either pop one 8k and gain 3k DP, or if they have nothing on the board that you can pop 8k or less, you can go all the way up to 17k DP, which is huge. It's like one of the bigger numbers for sure. So you can swing over those like Doragoromons, which is awesome. Yeah. This card has been, like, really good. And also, it evolves for three, which is the cheapest one. Yeah, the cheapest it's, Evo. It's, it's really nice. The three-cost Evo is huge, especially with trainings and stuff, too. And, like, with the uh, the BT-12, Gilmon, and Gromons, you can go up to... If you don't pop anything with your Evo, you can go up to, what, 21k? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's massive. It's big. It's, that's big enough to swing over a Tyrant, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, but that's pretty much... All I have to say about the BT-17 Gallantmon, it's really good. 
Um, I could see myself in the future when the raid Takato comes out, the one that gives raid when digivolving. Yeah. I could see myself like fully cutting out BT12 Gallantmon and just playing more of this guy because you're raiding at 21 or 17k, <laughs> sometimes 21. Like, yeah, it's big numbers. It's, it's dumb. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then for level sevens, we are running three crimson mode aces um this card is nuts like actually nuts makes the deck so good um on play when digivolving delete 15k dp total worth of your opponent's digimon sometimes you'll have like the plus 2000 from the guillemon the bt17 guillemon inheritable mm -hmm. and then you can pop 17k if you play bt17 Graumon, you can pop up to like 19k worth of stuff yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then when you're popping stuff with this, I said it before, but with the BT-17 War Realm on, uh, if you ace your opponent, you can restand your Digimon with this Crimson mode because you're deleting them by effect. And in tandem with um, BT-17 Gallantmon, sometimes you'll be at like a 18k or a 21k blocker, mm -hmm. which nothing is really getting over at that point. Um, and the most important part, uh, when attacking, uh, for every 10 total cards in both players' trashes, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. Yeah. Um, literally just Evo over a Gallantmon and then win the game. Or <laughs> also, I found myself hard playing this a lot. <laughs> and sometimes it's at 15k, it's level 7. You can't de digivolve it if you're just hard playing it. And some. Some decks just have a lot of trouble getting over that. So hard playing it's not a bad bad thing to do. And you can just, uh, when attacking, like have them trash one security. And then you're you're chipping through everything pretty quick. Yeah. Um, moving on to options. Simple, poor training. Um, Self-explanatory. <laughs> um, <laughs> just consistency booster super good and then we got four ex2 takatos um your turn when digimon's deleted spend this digimon get one memory and then it gives one digivolving blitz to the whole line mm -hmm. the deck revolves around it you need to play four like you need to see it every game i've won without it but it's just like it unlocks so much of the deck it's, yeah they really they printed like one of the if not the best Takato like right out the gate <laughs> yeah and it's sad because like I, I wish I could play the, the deck without having to rely so much on Takato right but it's so good it's so yeah. good I don't know how you can like you need to change a lot of the lines to like play without it right yeah um finishing it out um three of the new BT-17 Takato best Takato, or second best Takato, but also makes this deck so much more relevant. This is the one where um, Starmine phase, if you have a Guillemon, Graumon, Gallantmon in name, you gain one memory at the start of your main phase, and then end of turn, um, by placing this Tamer, Graumon, War Graumon, in your trash under a Guillemon, you can warp up into a Gallantmon without paying the cost. Nuts. Just nuts. <laughs> without, paying the without paying the cost is crazy. Without paying the cost and end of turn, so mm -hmm. you can literally pass the turn, warp up, and get your turn back with uh, War Graumon Inheritables, or if you saved like your EX2 Takatos, like and you're they're untapped, you can take turn back that way. Right. And I found like one play that you can do is literally like say you have like two Takatos out and. They put you two EX2 Takatos out, a warp Takato. They try to choke you out one, right? Mm -hmm. um, start of your turn, you'll go up to one. You can literally just hard play a Guillemon, um, warp up into a Gallantmon with um, the BT17 um, War Growl Inheritable. If you can pop any of their stuff with. Um, the one digivolving effect and take your turn back with your other Takatos, you have like a standing 
Um, you have a standing gallant mon just ready to go, and then if you warp to, up with like rush Geomon, you can just Evo into Crimson mode and win the game. Yeah, <laughs> like that's, that's crazy. That's insane. Card's so good. Yeah. But yeah, I realize like you're going kind of long, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, that's my deck. <laughs> you're good. You're good. No worries. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. Thank you so much for walking us through that. So real quick, uh, tech choices. Now, the, the first thing I noticed, you run you run four trainings. You don't run any real, like, security bombs or, like, big options. If, if Is there a reason that you just don't feel like you need them because you just have so much clearance with the rest of the, the, the deck already? Or Yeah, um, well, since Numemon got nerfed, Crimson Blaze, like, you could, you could still run Crimson Blaze right now, but... Right. I feel like you have enough power to just like clear like boards real, real easy, easily. Like you, I can see people still running Crimson Blaze to, for like the Imperial matchup, so that. Sure. But that's only one turn of stalling, so. Yeah. I don't think it's super worth it, but you can. You definitely can. Mm -hmm. I could also see myself like replacing like a Gilmon or two and playing like a Gatsumon. If Imperial oh, sure. is like a little too crazy, but I kind of just want all the pieces to like churn through. Yeah, it, it feels like you went for max consistency, and I mean it, it's been working. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then aside from that, good matchups, bad matchups. What do you feel like you do pretty well into? What do you feel like you have a hard time with? Yeah. Um. I feel like, honestly, I feel like I have a pretty neutral matchup into most things. It's kind of hard going into decks sometimes when you don't have, let's say, a stack and then like a BT-13 Gallant Mon in hand, because sure, you can get rid of their initial stack with your first stack, but then they're able to evolve into like Dextor Goromon. And then you get D digivolved and pop. Right. So you need to make sure like you have like the follow up play with the BT thirteen Gallimon, like your guy's cleared out, like hopefully he's dead, and then you just hard play a BT thirteen Gallimon and then finish off the 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 Dextor Goromon. So sometimes if you if you aren't seeing your pieces, like that matchup can be a little rough. Um generally this this deck does good against the the low to the ground wide board kind of decks, but I found like sometimes you can just aggro people out and be faster, and that's why I like was playing a lot of like the sec plus cards, like the the ex3 Growlmon to give extra checks, or I played more of the BT17 War Growlmon for the extra sec plus when I'm swinging. But also, it's just board clear, so. Yeah. Those types of decks, like, you always kind of, like, do well against. Right. And I, um, I was going to say, because you mentioned this, the just outspeed of the decks, too, and I, I think you beat Ben's Mirage with this, too, right? Yeah. So, I went to... When I went against Ben, it was three games. I think he beat me in, like, two turns game one. And then, because he just kind of saw the nuts. And when Mirage sees the nuts, it's, yeah, it's super tough. It's Mirage. And then also, like, I'm playing the Gigimon egg that draws when you swing with the Gilmon line. So you kind of, like, bury yourself in that matchup. So sometimes you just got to, like, place place a few things in the back and then play play got hard play guys on the board and then hope they stick so you can just like swing them down and try to finish the game as fast as possible that way okay um but i i distinctly remember like digivolving into like bt17 war Graumon, swinging two checks and then just hard playing like a Gilmon, like warping up swinging with bt12 gallant mon that's like another two because he didn't have anything on board oh god so you you can you can get there you can yeah. definitely get there okay but it also relies on you kind of like seeing the nuts being able to see right. your tamers early is like super important but you can play you can play around not having your tamers with trainings so just keeping your turn and swinging that way 
Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Makes sense. All right. Well, is there is there anything else you want to add? Um, not not really. The deck's deck's pretty good. I feel like people don't give it as much credit as it should have, but it it puts in work. It for yeah. sure puts in work. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you again for running us through the list for going over everything. Very much appreciated, sir. Uh, this is this has been awesome. I, I I'm not gonna lie. Like I, you know me. I don't really play like Galen. I don't play red decks. But like watching you play this recently and y'all like like hearing you talk about it more and more it's been making me want to be like i have all the cards i could i mean i could just you know just slap it in slap it slap it together <laughs> um yeah but it's yeah so, I, it it looks very very fun to play and from what i've seen you play it it's i, I you know there's not a doubt in my mind that it is it's the only red deck i play <laughs> that's true so. that is that's actually very true that's very true but yeah so yeah we'll go ahead and we'll wrap this up here uh for everyone who's watching thank you guys for joining us um thank you again for sunny for coming on and doing this for us and uh you know hopefully this uh, scratches that itch for all of you who've been asking for a gallon deck profile and if you've made it this far in the video and you haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel do that well like the video and then subscribe to the channel that, that'd be pretty pog and uh think about becoming a member like we said before all those cool perks that are coming out for you guys and yeah as as ben would say we'll catch you on that flippy flip Bye-bye.